This is a preview of one of our Patreon bonus episodes. If you like what you hear, you can get access to all of our bonus episodes by supporting us on Patreon at the $1 tier. Hello, and welcome to a very <laughs> special Spoilers Intended, March Madness at the Movies. Joining me today in the booth is Stephen Fort. Well, hello, and thank you, Ryan, for that introduction. A real pleasure to be here today. Looking forward to a couple of grueling matchups. As am I, Stephen. Also <laughs> joining me, Andrew Knuckles. Thanks for having me, Ryan. I really appreciate being here. I'm really looking forward to some of these matchups today. We had you on retainer. You had to show up. That's all there was. This to is that. why you're being paid. And I'm, I'm Ryan here, so Dinley. I don't get fined. Yes. <laughs> full name. Wow. Yes. Three full names for a full episode full of incredible matchups. <laughs> Steven, <laughs> why don't you tell the patrons listening at home what we're doing today? Well, Ryan, today we have got 32 movies seated randomly going head-to-head in a full-on knockdown, drag-out, single elimination bracket, and boy, have we got some matchups for you today. We each came in with a selection of choices, nominated them to come up with a list of 32, and we let Challenge do some random brackets and seedings for us, and let me tell you, Challenge doesn't know dick about movies. <laughs> they don't. <laughs> Andrew, any thoughts about the bracket before we give, you know, the the people at home the the full list? Overall thoughts? No, Ryan. Love it. Thanks for your contribution. (laughs) Legally mandated again. As always, he's just here so he doesn't get fined. (laughs) What is that fine nowadays, Andrew? You don't want to know. Incredible. It's above your pay grade. You have to ask. That's above my most things are. Ryan, if you have to ask, you can't afford it. (laughs) You can't afford it. All right, let's take a look at this bracket. Because, uh, yeah, Challenge, man. No, I think Challenge did a great job here because it puts two of Steven's top picks, one and two, against each other in the first round. (laughs) Yes, it does. Which is fantastic. Incredibly disrespectful. Incredibly disrespectful. I, I feel like the AI and the robots have been against me, and I don't like it. It makes me want to go upstairs and punch Andrew's vacuum. Do you have any kind of voice assistant at home, like any kind of echo or? Google oh yeah, home? we have. Well, no, we have the A one. Do you? Do you? Do you? Are you disrespectful to it quite a bit? Oh, I. It, it so its name it is looks A, like you are. and I call it B all the time. Let me tell you, I can see that. Yes. <laughs> so the first matchup is liar liar versus R R R. Oh, what a mismatch! Uh, what we got up next? We got uh, the Ghost in the Shell anime versus the Big Lebowski. That's two of my picks. That's yeah. kind of like, yeah, feels like it's yeah. coming from I mean, me too. RR and Liar Liar are both my picks. <laughs> True. Uh, we got Onward and My Cousin Vinny. What a what a weird mashup there. Yeah, and then we have The Hunt for Red October going up against How to Train Your Dragon. My first two picks. <laughs> then we have Inside Man versus The Matrix. Then we have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles going up against Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Then we have Psycho going up against D2, the Mighty Ducks. <laughs> and probably the biggest intended. heavyweight bout of the entire what tournament. A this is the one they're all watching. <laughs> uh, then we got The Batman versus Enemy at the Gates. I think that's actually a pretty fair that's, yeah, matchup. Yeah. It's an interesting matchup. Compelling, if you then will. We have, <laughs> compelling, if you will. <laughs> then we have Road to El Dorado versus The Godfather. <laughs> Then we have Man in the Iron Mask going up against Raising Arizona. I think that's actually a pretty even match there. Probably. Like uh, a fifth seed then, versus a seventh seed. Yeah, yeah. Like it's, yeah. Yeah. U.S. Marshals going up against Watchmen. Some wild cards right wild there. there. The Birds versus Grand Budapest Hotel. That's two heavyweights <laughs> lining up to knock it out. Hidalgo versus Everything Everywhere All at Once. That's a, that's a one seed versus a 16 yeah. if I ever saw one. Probably, I, yeah. Ice Age versus... Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves. That's incredibly rude of Challenge to match up two of my picks again. again yeah. <laughs> then we got Lethal Weapon going up against Romancing the Stone. Those are two very stylistically similar uh, 80s movies, movies you know, going against yeah. each other, yeah. And then we have Logan versus Aaron Brock. <laughs> that's, now that's the matchup well, no, we all want to see today. Char- heavy character, character dramas. dramas. They are. Yeah. <laughs> character <laughs> dramas. They are. All right. So the the challenge bracket will be available for you to um, basically like follow along, yeah. For you know for the whole tournament or whatever. We'll post an image on, on Patreon yeah. so you can yeah you'll have a visual aid. You're not just in the wilderness listening, listening to our audio. Yeah. 
First matchup. Liar Liar versus RRR. Oh, man. What a matchup we have here. <laughs> we have it on the floor. Let's hear the arguments. What are we thinking? So I think Liar Liar is probably one of Jim Carrey's like best films. This is peak, it's really good. It's peak like, 90s it's like peak, Carrey. He, he solidified his comedy at this point in so the 90s. I think of it as like it's the first time he took his comedy and kind of tamed it down to be more famous. It's not like Ace Ventura. This oh, isn't, yeah, Dumber Dumber. This yeah. isn't Ace Ventura. This isn't The Mask. It's a little this more like, grounded. A little bit, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's still Jim Carrey. But you still, but you really get a good little hint of his ability to be a more serious actor yeah. with oh, this. Yeah. And I think that really elevates the film quite a bit because yeah. he really does, he has some obviously fantastic comedic moments, but he just also has great, just some drama moments here and there towards the end of the film yeah. that are just really well done. It's a really good movie. I like yeah. it a lot. What do we think about RRR? We already know what we like. About Obviously, if you listen to this podcast, you've heard us speak about RRR quite about a few times. RRR. We have gushed about RRR. It's, it was the winner of our first Patreon's pick poll. It was. Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's a fantastic film. This is a it's incredible. And it's basically the full package. Film. It yes. is. You you have it's you a great have, bromance. Yeah. There's action. There's you have musicals, songs, you've and got dancing. Some incredible action sequences in there. Um, even Good comedy. Like even though mm-hmm. I love RRR, I do, or. Liar, liar. I don't think RRR can lose to liar, liar here. Ah, uh-uh. this is not a round one exit for RRR. No. no. I think it's it's like, and and no liar, liar is a fantastic movie, but it's nothing compared That's to That's why RRR. you sign no. up for March Madness at the movies for matchups like this where you go home crying. <laughs> They're both my picks. <laughs> you, thought, you thought Liar, Liar had a chance to make a run for the Elite Eight. Liar, Liar is wrong. the first seed. According to Chalange. Chalange is just According dumb. According to Chalange. Chalange is just dumb. <laughs> well, and, and yeah, it says RR is the last seed, which yeah. is completely false. But yeah, I think RR Or beats it is the last seed. This is an upset for the ages. <laughs> We're learning. All right, so RR has advanced to round two. So yep. now let's go on to the next matchup. Ghost in the Shell versus anime. the big... Lo- the, yeah, the anime, not the, the 2017. Anime. The anime movie. Yes, yes. Not, not the Scarlett Johansson 2017 and, and just movie. as a clarification, this is the U.S. release of the film, not the release of the Japanese showing for it that came out in November of... Uh, 95. 95. This would be uh, March something of 96, March yeah. 30th, I think. Okay. Mm-hmm. With that. So, Ghost in the Shell. I love this movie. This is this is one of those this, kind this, of genre defining. It is, yeah. Films. Like this is a core classic yeah. for one anime fans, two cyberpunk fans. It like sci-fi in general. Sci-fi, and, yeah. And this is this is also like definitely has the bones in a lot of stuff that came after it. Oh, for sure. Well, you can see the inspirations in the Matrix for mm-hmm. sure. Well, like later, in the Matrix, like Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven, yeah. like everything. Which was unfortunate to me when the 2017 version did come out that a lot of people were like, it's just ripping off the Matrix. And it's like, mm, well, see. <laughs> actually. actually. <laughs> and as someone who's a, a fan of the manga and stuff and the, the show, like the thing I, I dislike about the movie now is that they, it's very serious and very like solemn. Mm-hmm. And like the manga's all over the place. There's a lot of comedy. Yeah. There's a lot of like. Very, it takes stuff very seriously. Yeah, and so uh, to me, it's the distillation of one aspect of the manga mm-hmm. versus like an actual representation yeah. of all sides of it. But this definitely came out around like in the time of like in the mid '90s, where it was mm-hmm. like the crystallization of this kind of genre. Oh, it was it was probably for me the first anime movie I'd. Seen. I think I saw this before I saw Akira. It's it's a very formative film. Yeah, this is yeah. this is an early anime film for me as well. Yeah, and I, I feel like it was like the the idea of like oh. These can be like, like serious. Uh, this, this is for adults. For yeah. adults, yeah. 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 Big Lebowski, <laughs> one of my favorite Coen Brothers movies. This is a great comedy. So I think the reason why this this movie is so good, obviously Jeff Bridges is really good. Oh, but, his performance uh, as the dude is incredible. John Goodman, I think, really steals the show oh, yeah. in this movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, Steve I Buscemi's great in it, too. Oh, he yeah. is, but John Goodman just does such a fantastic job of being just this unhinged... <laughs> just that guy. Yeah. <laughs> Toes over the line. There are rules. This is a knob. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, to me, I don't know. I feel like the Big Lebowski wins it in my head because... As much as the Ghost in the Shell was like... That is fascinating. ...core to me... The, Explain the, yourself. The Ghost in the Shell movie is... My third favorite iteration of Ghost in the Shell, mm, behind the uh, manga and the TV. The anime. Oh no, no, no! The don't first don't even bring Standalone Complex in. I love Standalone Complex. Standalone Complex is great. I love Standalone I'm not Complex. saying it's bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but it's nowhere near the movie. It's nowhere near the accomplishment of the movie. It's just the movie is like I can watch them. I I love the movie. The, to the be clear, this is like I'm splitting hairs to do this, right? 
<laughs> yeah, the movie is a very There's serious, no way Big serious Lebowski take. beats out Ghost in the Shell here. I don't think you like, so No, but that's the thing. Go, like, the Big Lebowski is a good film. It's not the best Coen Brothers film. See, I think this is this is a, no. a more uh, this is a closer win for Ghost in the Shell than I would have expected for most matchups it could have had. But mm. I, like that's the thing. But like Big Lebowski the is a way. good film, and I like it, but it's nowhere near the best Coen Brothers film. I, okay, saying nowhere near is ridiculous. It's near the best Coen Brothers mm. film. It's in the top like three or four, probably for sure. Okay, I'll give it to Ghost in the Shell. I'm a Ghost in the Shell fan. You don't have to like talk it no, into I, this. I, All right, so Ghost in the Shell advances. So next up, we have Onward versus My Cousin Vinny. What an interesting matchup. So this is a tough matchup because obviously, it's really hard. Because Marissa Tomei won an Academy Award for this movie, didn't she? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, she was at least yeah. nominated. No, she yeah. won. She won. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And now I've never seen my cousin Vinny, but I have seen the the courtroom scene with her in it. Yeah, just which, say two I mean, utes. Utes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love my cousin Vinny. Um, it's I, I saw it when it came out. Mm-hmm. I, I didn't watch it in theaters. I remember I rented it uh, pretty quickly after it came out, mm-hmm. and just loved it. And I was a kid. Like a courtroom drama should not have been like you, you shouldn't know, hit like, like that. Your, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then I, I do think back to the mid '90s when you had like the rainmaker and you had like a lot of these like courtroom dramas. And I was all men. about yeah, a few yeah. good men. I was like hooked and I'm like, why did I like legal battles? Or like like <laughs> night, night court had just ended its run. I loved probably. night court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, but that's the thing. Like, so obviously my cousin Vinny is a staple for the nineties. It's kind of what you yeah, think yeah. of like when you're not thinking of action movies. Joe Pesci's great in it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Onward's pretty good too. I, so I think Onward is a phenomenal film. It's probably the last true Pixar film that I've seen. It's probably my, that they've come out with. My I think favorite mm-hmm. since that twenty twenty since COVID run mm-hmm. basically. Yeah. Uh, definitely it, since COVID, I would say got, definitely for that. It yeah. got kind of dinged, obviously coming out right, basically having a like a two week release, and yeah, then, or like a week in the box office, and, then and pandemic COVID hit. shut it down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So but it's the, the, the first victim of Disney Plus. No, I will definitely say this is like. I cried like a baby at the end of this film. This movie and I, I do understand. I do hits. cry pretty easy, but like this man, it is brutal at the end of this film. Just yeah. and I don't want to like get into too much spoilers, no, but yeah. it's yeah, it it just it's has a, such a good emotional it's a phenomenal core. emotional yeah. finish. Now, I, but that's the thing though. I will say that the rest of the film is a little run of the mill for what like a Pixar film is until you get to the end of the movie and everything kind of clicks into place. I, I would agree with that. For me, I, I like it pretty good, but it's not my favorite. Pixar movie. Yeah. It's definitely my favorite recent Pixar movie. Like, like you were saying, like for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, like and I like turning red, but it didn't really, it didn't feel as much of a Pixar film as it did for like onward does. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I got to give my vote to my cousin Vinny just because like, I love rewatching that movie. Mm-hmm. I've seen onward once and I think I'm good with that. Like I could rewatch it, but I don't really find myself like, because I'm really just waiting for the emotional payoff at the end. And if I know it's coming, it's not going to hit me as hard as that first time I mm-hmm. saw it. So, like, for me, okay. I'm more of a My Cousin Vinny on this one. So, I feel that I'm the swing vote on here because I know Steven's probably going to vote for Onward. Yeah, Steven. probably. Yeah, I think, and, well, I but, think my vote here is Onward. But for me, honestly, like, I haven't even seen the film, and I know My Cousin Vinny <laughs> has more cultural, like, it's relevant. It's certainly got, got the memes. Andrew's yeah. going to watch it and hate it and be like, oh, no, I can't believe I voted for that. I voted for that. But yeah, I'm going to go for My Cousin Vinny. Okay, My Cousin also, Vinny. How have you not seen My Cousin Vinny? It just never happened. We need know. to review it. It's really good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So next up, we have The Hunt for Red October Ooh. versus How to Train Your Dragon. Steven, speak on both. Whoa. <laughs> why? Challenge, why? Challenge. <laughs> I mean, Hunt for Red October is like the, to me at least, the Tom Clancy film, right? Yeah. This is the one that... Even though you may say, like, you know, one, pink, clear and present pink danger <laughs> or uh, Patriot Games yeah. is better, the one that everyone has seen is, is hard for us. Well, because this has definitely very broad appeal. I think so, yeah. yeah. You have Alec Baldwin in it. You have Sean Connery. He doesn't even pretend James to be Joel Russian. No, yeah, no, he's, I'm he's, not he's speaking they, with they a they Russian this, accent. <laughs> I, I want to say that this movie was one of the first times they had ever done this, was it starts off in Russian, and then it just transitions to English. Yeah. And it, like, lets the actually, audience I actually know. thought that was a pretty good way to that do that. That was a cool that. way to do oh, it. Like, great. We're not yeah. doing yeah. subtitles for half the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you've watched, it does it before it gets to Sean Connery. Yes. <laughs> so that as soon as he appears, he's like, what do you need? <laughs> you know, you know, it's, you know it's how the negotiation went down. He got on yeah. set and they were like, okay, so you're going to say this to the Russian accent? I'm not. But the Hunt for Red October. The, the, yeah. <laughs> Give me one ping and one ping only. 
Thanks for listening to this preview of one of our Patreon bonus episodes. If you like what you heard, you can hear the rest of this episode and get access to all of our other bonus episodes for just $1. Go to patreon.com slash spoilers intended podcast. Thank you.